Hello and welcome to Engineer Simple. So in this video series, we learned a couple of things. One, how to calculate the line to ground fault imposed on low voltage side of a transformer. Then we calculated the fault current in the example that I went through to be 11,000 amps. Then we wanted to limit the fault current to 6,000 amps. So we proceeded with two options. Option one, we added a neutral grounded reactor and we calculated the reactance of that reactor to be 0 0.54 ohms to limit the fault current on face to ground fault on the low voltage size to 6000 amps. Then we Option two was to add the initial grounded resistor and we calculated the required resistor to be 100.6 ohms in order to limit the phase to ground fault current to 6000 amps. So you can see to, to get this to get the same results, you know, reactance versus resistor you know and that's because the system is mostly inductive so it has a reactance is more than a resistor so when you add the terms you know or impedances so it's resistor plus j times x since this is dominating so if you add the re resistor it's you will add a large resistor basically to get the same result result so now so again when we had the transformer so like the high side is effectively uh, is solidly grounded but the low voltage so anytime you add an impedance whether it's a reactor or a resistor you can impact the effective grounding you know of the system so by i triple e you know you would maintain to maintain effective to to maintain effective grounding of the system there are two conditions one the zero the zero sequence reactance to the ratio of the zero sequence reactance to the positive sequence reactance needs to be less than three and two the z, the ratio of the zero sequence resistance to let's see two So you have two, two conditions to the positive reactance needs to be less than one. So we have now that we, we ground the, new, the neutral in option one through the reactor, then through the resistor, we need to make sure that we are maintaining effective grounding. So with the neutral grounded reactor, of 0 0.54 ohms the equivalent positive sequence reactance was 11.2 percent and the equivalent zero sequence reactance was 11.64 plus three times 9.49 percent and i would recommend going back to the vi previous videos if you want to know where i got these values from which is 40.11 percent so this is for option one grounding the neutral through a reactor so 
let's calculate the ratio of the zero sequence reactants to the positive sequence reactants. So the zero sequence reactants is 40.11 divided by 11.2, and both are in percent. So make sure that we have units accordingly. Calculate to be 3.58, which is, which is not less than 3. So, so with this neutral grounded reactors, reactor, we would not, we would not maintain effective a grounding of the system. So we don't have to check for the ratio of the zero sequence resistance to the positive sequence reactants. So with option two, grounding the neutral of the low side through a neutral grounded resistor with a res resistance value of 100.6 ohms. So the equivalent positive sequence impedance is still 11.2%. And we calculated the zero sequence impedance to be 34.04%. So the ratio of the zero sequence to the positive sequence reactants is 34.04% divided by 11.2% which is 3.04, which give and take, you know, we can call it less than or equal to three. So with, within some margin of error. So then Let's calculate the other ratio, the zero sequence resistance divided by the positive sequence reactance. So is equal to divided by 11.2. So we can see this is not greater than one. So it's not less than one. So effective grounding is not maintained in this case. So with a solidly grounded, so if, if we do not, so basically This is the high voltage, and this is a low voltage. So instead of basically, we don't put any anything to ground the the neutral. So it's solidly grounded. So we know X one is eleven point two percent, and the equivalent zero sequence impedance to be. 34.04. So the zero sequence, positive sequence impedance, 34.04 divided by 11.2, 3.03, which again is same as 3 because there is a lot of uh, rounding errors so so it's solidly grounded 
so it's it's important to you know when you add a grounding device to the neutral it's important to check for effective grounding make sure that that's maintain, maintained you know so that was it for this video series so again kind of recap in this in these videos kind of went through a, a system 138 to 12 kV so I drew the network sequences calculated the line to ground fault that would be seen on the low voltage side then so the fault current for this example was 11,000 amps then we asked the question how can we limit this current fault current to 6,000 amps option one we added a neutral ground air reactor to the low voltage between the neutral point and the ground or the grounding. Then option two, we added a neutral ground air resistor. So we calculated both values of the reactants and the resistance. Then we checked for effective grounding of the system. Make sure that we are maintaining that. And, and we did that with verifying two two conditions basically condition one and condition two so i hope you enjoy these videos and until then have a great time